Hello, my fellow warrior of love. Today's video is um, dedicated to Candil. Candil, thank you for asking this question, brother. He was asking about uh, how to use magic mushrooms in a ceremonial way for healing. Uh, so first of all, I want to celebrate Candil being one of our gold uh, package, gold, gold program graduates, um, and may re, uh, may re, uh, renew his. Um, membership so um nice to have you with us brother and great question so if any of you are exploring doing inner child healing deep healing i would love to share some ways that i have used magic mushrooms as a way to heal trauma um so magic mushrooms have been there for me from the start maybe even before i started officially doing healings um what's led me to my biggest breakthrough and led me to my awakening and led me to healing work and where i am today was actually uh i used to party a lot when i was 24 and i had a bag of mdma which is close to it's like ecstasy uh, which now is being used therapeutically to help people with ptsd like mainstream science and and scientists are and psychology, psychiatry, like the mainstream, is now starting to look to LSD, magic mushrooms, MDMA, ecstasy as a way to help people open up about these deep traumas like PTSD and war, people who've been to war had severe traumas. So, um, just a little short, short story is I had these pills and I just kind of was done with my old life, I was ready to be reborn to a new life. Um, and in that process, I had five bags of MDMA. So I told myself, let me just pop them one a day. <laughs> I don't know if I told myself or I got the download to do that. So I popped one a day and it was this five days of just deep healing, journaling, channeling, releasing, crying, a lot of baths, a lot of writing, healing music, hydration, water, breathing, meditation. It was just five days in a row to really get to the core of these traumas and I actually don't really take the time to really anchor in how powerful that was I was just like very going with the flow there was no structure to my life but that was people now spend two thousand four thousand dollars going to someone and dedicating like a week to doing multiple uh, plant medicine ceremonies um, and that was just guided to me way before any of the stuff was mainstream so uh, and that led me to for forgiveness, um, healing my biggest traumas, loving myself, facing my biggest fears, letting go of religion in a negative way and control and breaking out of the matrix, dropping out of college, finding my truth, being who I'm here to be, like it all led to that. And another element was taking magic mushrooms. So the way I take magic mushrooms, um, and this has been this has been there from for a very long time. These magic mushrooms, I believe, are here on our planet to help us have these uh, help us break out of the matrix, help us see things from a higher perspective. Ha has helped me heal deep traumas that I, I have I wasn't even aware about or didn't give myself. I couldn't access in a conscious state, you know, the ego is very guarded and with magic mushrooms and MDMA, it just felt like I felt so safe to go into the deepest, darkest parts of my being um, and just cry it out loud. So different phase. So l let's get through it. So how to use magic mushrooms in a step-by-step ceremonial way so one you definitely want to fast the day before just eating lighter foods I, I eliminate meat and dairy more hydration more fruits and veggies and salads and lighter foods uh, so the day before you can have a normal breakfast lunch maybe at the, after 6 7 p.m. I would recommend just not eating the next day if you're gonna do your magic mushroom ceremony I recommend doing it in the daytime some people say do it at nighttime because you're your uh, third eye gets more you know melatonin and stuff like that so some people do it you, you cover your eyes and you do it at night because you you're able to activate your third eye more and, and kind of that's one option for me 
because of experiences with entities and stuff in the past i like to do it in the daytime but then you might not have that much of a third eye activation but i still think i still feel you're surrounded the sun's shining it's a beautiful day i'm out in nature and um so I, fa I, I make sure I'm hydrated in the morning. I'm drinking water. Sometimes I'll have a smoothie for breakfast. So keep still keeping it light. But you don't want to have a heavy stomach when you're digesting the mushrooms because then you feel heavy, right? And I have a lesson with that. <laughs> At the end of my ceremony once, I was like hungry. And I went to the grocery store and I was like, the orange was like intuitively speaking to me, just buy an orange and the juicy orange. And then there was a bag of chips, which was like inner child comfort food. And I had the bag of chips and my vibrations just went. <laughs> so you become ultra sensitive to salts and fats, like fried food. You become ultra sensitive. We're already being affected by those things. But on magic mushrooms, you, I really felt, wow, like this is what it's doing to me when I'm not... Um, consciously aware uh, so actually you feel things on a deeper level so fasting setting your intentions i like to pray over the magic mushrooms i like to so you can mix it into a chocolate if you know how to make chocolate or eat it with chocolate or uh I, you can do it as a tea if you know how to do that you can find videos online setting intentions your shield and protected calling in your guides and angels love and only love is allowed to be present uh i i also hold the mushrooms in my hands and i say if there's any energies in these magic mushrooms that are not for my eyes could transmute them allow this whole ceremony to be contained by source god universe in a safe container um and then i just turn all if i'm indoors i close all the wi-fi close the windows i really want to go intro introverted i usually like to lie down on my bed i've got my mask on so i'm going inwards i've got really powerful healing music being played those if you type in 528 frequency hertz those kind of things so you've got good vibe because you feel everything so your senses so incense, smudge, uh, sage, music, liquids, just maybe, you know, some good quality water or minerals. And, um, and just surrender. I remember at the beginning, my air side would be walking in nature and I'm walking, walk, walking, and I take the mushrooms and I just feel like I want to continue walking. And it's like, it just wants me to stop. So I remember tripping once fi and finally surrendering because I tripped. So it was like the trip was there to stop me and lie down and surrender uh, to receive because you want to be in that feminine state sometimes to fully receive the guidance and the wisdom and going into the inner journey. So make sure if you're feeling during your ceremony, I feel a big part of it is, yes, there's a phase at the beginning where you're like, energy's buzzing and it feels like a energetic orgasm just about to explode um, of excitement and bliss and joy. So there's that aspect of it and you just sometimes start laughing because you're like, oh my God, I've been taking myself so seriously, taking life so seriously. It's all a big joke. It's all a big illusion. And we really bought into it. Uh, so there's this laughter that I think happens when you realize who you are and what the truth about life. So you sometimes you just laugh so much and it just like opens up your heart and you remember who you are. You're like laughing with God and laughing with Mother Earth and with your guides and, and your higher self. And just so much bliss and joy and i remember sometimes just putting my hand on my heart and just saying thank you thank you thank you a thousand times i just so much gratitude uh so you remember in that in those moments you have like in life we have these little glimpses of remembering who we are and remembering the truth it would be nice if that's our default setting and we only have glimpses of forgetting who we are <laughs> that's i think that's where we're headed and that's where we were before uh the great fall before we forgot so, but isn't it ironic, like in our life, we have little glimpses of remembering who we are, and then we go back to forgetting, <laughs> instead of like, always remembering who we are and having little glimpses of forgetting. So there's that, there's the gratitude, there's the I love you, I love you, there's like, I know, I know you now, my faith, I know, I, I know what whatever word you have for it i know what the divine is I, i'm experiencing it right now i know it um 
And then I feel through the surrendering, you can get visuals, you can get feelings, emotions come up, and it just walks you through these things. I feel there's an intelligence, the magic mushrooms, and I feel like, I remember at one point it said like, hey, you know, forgive your brother. You know, a part of me was looking for an older brother who was loving, caring, nurturing, and I love my brother as an amazing brother. And maybe as a kid, I was looking for more, my, my, my delicate Piscean sensitive old soul side was looking for a lot actually was looking for a lot more from a lot of people and a lot of people did not um meet that requirement you know it's not their fault it's uh, those were my needs um and so it just told me like hey forgive your brother you know uh forgive your brother and you know love you know forget love send love to little taru ah, my little inner child right there and letting him know that he is loved like because I created stories that I'm not lovable and deserving of love and So pay attention. That's a lot a lot of times when people use it as a party drug or just to like have fun It's a great experience, but it also has a very deep uh, healing shamanic um, Purpose right here in Mexico where I am now. There's a huge um community there's a big community of how the indigenous people of mexico use, used to and still use magic mushrooms and peyote and other plant medicines as a form of deep healing like just like ayahuasca and those things now the uh warning with magic mushrooms uh things so let me conclude that so yeah deep at the end there's a moment where and and set your intention right so i'm intending that i use this magic mushroom ceremony sometimes i go surrendering to my infinite self sometimes i go whatever's blocking me from taking my next steps whatever uh, inner child stuff that needs to be integrated shadow excuse me i just drank a lot of water shadow side that needs to be integrated so it all comes up. Pay attention to the mind and the ego. It might try to distract you somehow. So just observe it. Maybe set prayers for the mind that it sets, gets set aside. Just let the higher self set it aside. Show it that it's safe. Really affirm that you're safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering. I release control. Uh, I've seen the mind try to sabotage the session. So really doing things maybe breath work beforehand that really get you into out of your mind you know out of the ego control really being a surrendering state receptive state and eating lighter foods helps you kind of surrender to the light lighter side of your being and then it will guide you right you'll be like why am i thinking of this thing from the past why am i feeling this emotion like you might just start to be guided and then work with that okay i'm seeing this person what do i need to tell them what do they need to tell me what am i holding on to what you know what emotions am i holding on to guilt shame blame anger resentment what uh who do i need to forgive uh in the past what i feel is wrong me what parts have i done in the past i need to forgive myself and go through those experiences like i forgive myself thank you i forgive you i love you i'm sorry ho'oponopono is really beautiful ancient hawaiian technique of just repeating i'm so sorry thank you i love you uh i forgive you and i forgive myself i always add that i forgive myself so that's a beautiful thing trust that it's guiding you will bring up those deeper things at the end that's part of the process some people say you might have a bad trip on magic mushrooms well i highly recommend don't doing it when don't not to do it in a moment where you feel the energy is really chaotic and you're not grounded it's really good to do it like i love doing it in days where the sun is shining and i have nothing planned on my day and it just feels like a big vacation day dedication to ceremony to healing i'm out in nature i don't want to be around too many people and it's just me and mother earth and i'm so clear and uh maybe it might be good to have some device where you can just by the way, this feels very like alien -y when you're on mushrooms, computers and technologies. It's just like, you're like, <laughs> it's just like, what is this? Um, you really want to connect with like, with, with what feels real and grounded. And sometimes you get all these ideas, trust that it's all happening. But if you feel the need to, you can just like find the easy way to just hit record and record into it. Uh, but it's happening in the moment. It's not one of those things, oh, I have to remember. I mean, you can remember. Uh, a lot of times, I, you know, it's all just happening in real time on so many dimensions that, you know, the lessons are there on a deep level, but you can record them. And then to conclude, 
uh, yeah, make sure that after care. So after care, you have a nice, warm, yummy meal, maybe like a stew or a soup or whatever feels nourishing to your body, grounding, sweet potatoes, some quinoa, things like that, to make sure you get really grounded because you're kind of like out of your body a little bit. So it grounds you back in your body. Take it easy. Drink lots of water. Journal if you need to. Relax. Give yourself a break as if you came back from surgery because sometimes it feels like open heart surgery. Uh, so you just feel very like cut open and all your inner stuff is exposed and it feels vulnerable. So you really want to reassure yourself you're safe and give yourself the time to integrate two, three days a week, two weeks. You might need some time to integrate. So be gentle with yourself during those times. Maybe make sure you have your support system. Maybe someone you can call where you can just kind of talk out what you've experienced or some people offer this as a, a ceremony. Uh, me and my partner might start to do it, might start offering uh, magic mushroom healing ceremonies here in Tulum, Mexico. Uh, also, um, yeah, so you can find people hold space for you and then they can help you integrate. And, you know, sometimes, like I remember doing one where the facilitator was just so nurturing and she was just like hugging me at the end and hearing out my stuff. And I could see my stuff coming out, like my trust stuff was coming out and I was pushing her away, like not trusting her. And my uh, scarcity was coming up, like, I was so loving the moment that my inner child was like, I don't want this moment to end. It's like, oh my God, how much time do we have? And I kept feeling like at some point the time was going to be up and she would just leave and I was left alone. So it's some like childhood abandonment trauma. So all your stuff comes up. I even remember once like really shadow aspects were coming out and I was getting very uh, intense, like very like aggressive, like I, 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 I was sensing there was three of us and I was sensing one of uh, my friend's friend was like distancing me or like, like I was experiencing her like rejecting me. And at one point I was just like, I felt like finally I called her out, but I wasn't calling her out from my heart because what I did was I felt it and I felt it again and again, and I just internalized it and it has history, old wounds. So it came out and I was like, I forgot what I said, but it's like, we're not she's like, she's like we're not on the same page about something and i was like we're not we're not even in the same dimension right now <laughs> and i said it like really intensely i was saying it like you're in another world like i was trying to say it like you're just not i don't know i, I just i was upset and i was hurt and i was projecting it outwards and then we, you know, I went and we had a big chat and she helped me because everything plays out the way it needs to. And it's not always pretty, right? So the not pretty stuff might come out and it's a matter of making sure you're surrounded with people who can hold it down, be grounded to, to help you with those, uh, blind spots, shadow stuff. Um, make sure to, yeah, the after work is very important. And what I learned from that is always share the vulnerability. So the vulnerability would have been, hey, sister, I noticed when I was talking to you and you turned your back, I felt like maybe you didn't want me to talk to you or, you, you know, rejection came up for me. So sharing the vulnerability and not sharing uh, from the hurt place. So the hurt place is, wow, you turned your back on me. Wow, you are per you are purposely trying to uh, block my connection with my friend, and you are not being inclusive. That is, th that's rude and that's uh, disrespectful. So I'm now I'm going to disrespect you back. So that's where we can get into trouble because uh, the mind is a um, is a story generating machine as landmark taught me it just creates so many stories so there's so many things we don't know to be true like maybe it is true that there was something going on maybe she's unaware of it maybe subconsciously i'm picking up on something she's not aware of which has been my whole life just picking up on people's like subconscious uh or unintentional or maybe even intentional but they still kind of they're like i don't know and it's like what can I do if I feel it and hear it and experience it and they don't know better? So it's not an attack, but it feels like an attack. Like sometimes I tell my partner, she's like, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to upset you. And I was like, you might as well have said it because I, I received the communication 
uh, just non-verbally, right? Like empaths and sensitive people, we experience this. There's a communication happening. Anyways, oh my God, I talk so much. <laughs> well, I want to change that. I really go deep into my shares and stories and I'm fully surrendering to the flow of where this conversation wants to go. <laughs> there. Um, and, and it's a beautiful opportunity to really break these cycles, especially if something keeps happening. You know, like I... If you get this, so that had to bring up rejection wounds, abandonment wounds, um, you know, and maybe for her, I don't know, maybe for her, it was, uh, I think she said something about like her father and like uh, fearing the masculine or toxic masculinity. So sometimes we perceive things as, you know, like with me and my partner, sometimes it's like unsafety comes up for me. And it's like, I need to experience something that feels unsafe so that unsafety can come out it's not going to come out when i'm feeling super safe and comfortable and it's not that i'm not safe i need to perceive that i'm not safe so that the unsafety comes up so it can be cleared so love yourself through those experiences maybe if you have someone who is certified who not certified but like you know some trainings out there uh they can walk or maybe have like a massage session or a healing session after that or someone you can chat with to really help ground you after that so that's my recommendation on how to do magic mushrooms or plant medicines i mean i can't speak on all plant medicines because and just a heads up, guys, when you're going to find someone to help you with these things, be very discerning. There's a lot of mixed energies. Uh, there's a lot of people who are not holding space properly. There are some people who are not making sure that, the, that you're protected. And there's some trickster beings coming in and out of those ceremonies really affecting people and making people um, just creating a lot of you know not so good experiences for folks so be very discerning with the energies you have around you when you're doing these ceremonies uh, especially when you're trusting someone to hold space for you there's some people that are they so walk their walk you can they walk their walk they're so in it they're full-time shamans like they're real the real deal uh, they do a lot of work before and after the ceremony i've met some of these people beautiful people and there's some people who you know not they're they're either consciously not good intentional or it's just like innocent ignorance they 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 just they're not they think they're ready to do this but they're not ready to hold space and i always like to say ease and grace with your ceremonies because you you know me being someone who wants it all wants it now like I clear all my blogs clear everything from childhood like that's a lot so just always conclude by saying uh, allow this to happen with ease and grace always integrate into the prayer that you're putting in the magic mushrooms this or something greater so that um, and, and also more than I know to ask for so that you're opening it up to something beyond your conscious understanding understanding all right guys much love so uh, heads up I've got a uh, an event coming up this Thursday um, and it is a powerful event at 12 p.m. Eastern time and the event is called this Thursday yeah activate the power of your heart it's a powerful call in uh, Leo season by the way happy 8 8 if you guys missed our powerful uh, we did a powerful call to help you manifest powerfully and uh, we did some like 5d um, we did some light light downloading some light codes um, we did some you know bringing our beings back into the divine blueprint stepping into our power dreaming bigger than ever uh, activating the divine masculine I wrote it all somewhere that I don't have right now but a very powerful call and the replay will be available make sure you're signed up signed up at targbb.com we'll send you the replay there and uh, it's called the awaken summit so pay attention for something called the awaken summit and we'll do our best to share it on all our social media platforms um, and uh, the way of the heart, again, go to targview.com, sign up there, and we'll do our powerful call this Thursday. Powerfully activate your 
infinite love, the intelligence of your heart, the knowing of your heart, the strength of your heart. When your heart's fully activated, it's your biggest protector. Uh, and then after that, we're going to share a little bit about the infinity healing training we've got coming up. So for those of you who have taken our infinity healing course, you can join us again like you do every year. And for those of you who are interested in learning about infinity healing, that would be a good time to find out more. Love you guys. Keep shining, keep thriving, and stay tuned for uh, some new things. I feel like my company is just going through a rebirth right now, and we're just really trying to help help you guys in the way for the long term. There's, there's something bigger than making money from your gifts. There's really manifesting your truest dreams, uh, really becoming free on all levels, financial freedom is part of it, sovereign on all levels, empowered on all levels. And so it's beyond, it's beyond the, the, it's beyond what I can even fathom. So it's bigger and stay tuned. We will continue to support you guys, whether money loses all value or not. Our mission is to, to help and uh, manifest our dreams and um, all of that. So stay tuned. Much love.